Hi guys, Jules here from WZMB. We are here with Lynn Day of Daniel Lion Eye. Hello. And it is an absolute honor to see with you today. Um, I guess Hello. I will start out by telling everybody about in 2001 was first The King of Rock and Roll, the first album by Daniel Lion Eye. And just last year they released Volume 2. And it is awesome. It is an awesome album. <laughs> been going so oh far. it's been going really well i mean uh, it's been kind of a rough tour since we're like opening act mm -hmm. and you know everything is always wrong you know sometimes we don't get sound checks or shit like that but you know uh, the audiences have been really good and cool. uh, nice gigs pretty nice cool i um also let's see what for volume two what influenced you to take this turnaround like totally different there's a stoner rock style of king of yeah. rock and roll and now it's heavy and dark I've always been into like heavier music I mean, mm. I'm a big fan of Impel Nazarene from Finland and Strappy Young Land and you know bands like that and uh, you know it was like 10 years in between so mm. a lot of stuff you know happened there I think, uh, in my personal life also that made me want to uh, release a little bit more aggressive music very cool and in the studio was there any particular artist you were listening to uh, well, when I'm in studio, I try not to listen to anything else because you, mm. know, you end up, you know, stealing their ideas anyway. So oh, okay. <laughs> you know, you end up influenced by people, even if you don't intend to do so. So mm. try not to, you know, do that too much. Okay. And um, how did you come to join forces with Manu and Seppo? Uh, well, <clears throat> Manu is my uh, fiance's friend's boyfriend, <laughs> and uh, I, I've been in Birmingham. Uh, mm -hmm. a few times to their shows and uh, I just, uh, you know, he's the uh, best screamer I have heard so far so I had to ask if he wanted to join and he wanted him. Uh, Seppo, the drummer, he's, uh, he's practicing in the next room uh, where he was practicing in Helsinki mm -hmm. and I've heard him like over a, a period of years time like uh, someone is playing there, you know, who is this guy, he's great and then uh, mm -hmm. finally got the courage to ask him and he was like, yeah, alright, cool. so that's how it happened. And also, you're working with producer Healy as you've done with the Him albums. Mm -hmm. How how is that like with a different kind of approach, or is it <coughs> kind of the same? Or? Well, Healy, he's a genius, and you know he's a freak. You know, <laughs> he also recorded the uh, first Daniel Lyon album. And mm -hmm. It's just lovely to work with him. You know, there was he was my first option, and I called him immediately, and he was like, sure, of course, if there's going to be another Daniel Lyon, I have to be. <laughs> Songwriting, mm -hmm. um, particular was it just one particular? Did you write all of the music, or was it a collaboration with the guys? Or? Well, at first, uh, I kind of started writing the songs. I mean, uh, with the drummer then Bolton, we went just the two of us to the practice place and mm -hmm. worked through the uh, uh, basic ideas and just made some demos from them. And then, uh, by the time we went to the studio, <coughs> we only recorded drums and uh, guitars, and then I sent them to. Burton to his home studio and he did all the keys himself. I just told him to do whatever you want. And then with Michelle we uh, co-wrote the lyrics. Cool. Uh, yeah, so that album has been, no joke, for like months now in my car. It has oh. played like on the way cool. to school and all the way back home. I've been That's listening nice to it like crazy. <laughs> it's, it's, I've got a tattoo awesome. in honor oh. of, of one of your songs, oh, Me Athletic cool. Way. Oh. It's really touched me. I love that song, and I was wondering how did you come up with that song, and what was your inspiration? Oh well, uh, it's actually everybody's favorite song in the band as well. Really? It's the always the last set, last song of the set every night. Mm -hmm. We're planning to probably record a, a new version of it as well. Let's see. Cool. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know what the inspiration is. It's like a, it's a love song, but it's a twisted love song, and uh, you know the lyrics they mean different things to me every time I hear it. So I, I won't even start to analyze it. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, it has the yeah, like kind of a oriental Eastern vibe as well, mm -hmm. which I love. And, you know, you always have to have one Eastern song on the album. So mm -hmm. I love 
pretty much everything about that song, but um, <laughs> oh. of course you guys have been very busy. Um, have you considered a music video at all? Well, we had this uh, competition uh, like oh, yeah. months ago, mm -hmm. like fans to, uh, they had uh, two songs, uh, songs they could pick. I never wanted to be number one, or, mm -hmm. and or then uh, Hero Shaman, and mm -hmm. uh, so, you know there were quite a few funny videos, and uh, somebody who did the uh, number one video, mm -hmm. he, he won it. But uh, other than that, we don't have any plans to make music videos, since you know nobody really shows them anyway, and you know it's going to just end up in the YouTube, and they cost a lot of money. So yeah, it would be nice to have a video, but. <laughs> will there possibly be uh, live footage, like a DVD or anything like that? I don't know. It would be great. That I mean, awesome. I don't know if we have been actually recording any of the shows from the straight from the desk. We should do that. So uh, I'm sure we have some video clips, so we could make a like a compilated video. That'd be cool. And also be for all the gear junkies out there, because there's quite a few people listening into the show and mm -hmm. that are musicians as well. But would you tell us a bit about your stage setup? Uh, well, <clears throat> my setup is really uh, basic on this tour. It's mm. just a f uh, Gibson SG through a Laney VH100R, and that's it. You know, normally I have some uh, fast pedals and shit like that in between, but this music is too fast for that, so it just would make it all mushy. So it's just a basic distorted Gibson. And what is your? <coughs> well, I guess you kind of already answered this, but your most favorite to perform live? Yeah, you know, I think we're. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And um, so far, any memorable moments that's happened on the tour? Because it was getting close to the <coughs> end here. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things that have happened, but uh, I don't know. The most memorable moment is probably in Pittsburgh, when we didn't even get to play our show, because the uh, uh, two blocks went black, you know. Uh, it was like a blackout, so oh. they had to cancel the whole show. Even Cradle of Field couldn't play. Oh my god. That was first thing that pops into my mind. Wow. <laughs> There's been a lot of things going wrong, like our trailer broke down a few oh, wow. times, we almost missed another show, and, and one of the nights we had to uh, use Nachtmuseum's back line because mm -hmm. the trailer was broken, and you know, it's been a pretty hectic tour. <laughs> wow. So what's it like um, performing, well, co-headlining with all of these bands, with Teresa's, am I saying that right? Yeah. Teresa's yeah, yeah. and Nachtmuseum, mm -hmm. and of course Grey Field. How is it's been great. It's a weird mix. I mean, we're all different. Torresa is very different from us, like this battle metal type of stuff. And mm -hmm. I don't know what, what we are, but not Mustium, they're a great band, but they're also very different. And then Cradle of Field. But, uh, I think it works. Cool. We, we actually um, ran into Danny and James at our oh. hotel. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, no way! Mm -hmm. so, so it was exciting, <coughs> and the fact that when he told us how to get here, yep. you were right around the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I saw the fill-in flag, so I'm like, that's the bus. Yeah. So. They're all really nice guys in all the bands, and in we sharing a bus with Torres you know. Mm -hmm. It's like 12 guys wow. crammed in this bus. And, you Just know, in here? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, you know, if we, you know, it helps that we're both from Finland. Mm -hmm. But also, there's no assholes in the bus, so no fist fights yet. <laughs> um, there's a lot of people, because um, with friends with via Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. that are from the UK. Yeah. And I'm sure you've probably heard this question a few times. Is there going to be a UK tour? <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. I mean, I, I would love to play, you know, anywhere. They basically let us, but it's kind of complicated because uh, the him situation is uh, not settled yet. So mm -hmm. when we go back home from this tour, we're going to have a meeting and see. What's going to happen with that? And you know, after that, we can start planning. But I also want to record a new album <coughs> with Daniel and I as cool. soon as possible. And you know, it's kind of easy because uh, Seb Boy is also practicing on the same place, so we can just go there and jam. And cool. It should, you know, come out quite so hopefully. I was going to ask you that too if there was mm. going to be anything like in the future for Daniel and I, so yeah, a definitely. possible album. <clears throat> yeah, because I, you know, I love the lineup now. It's perfect. I love what everybody's doing in the band. And uh, the plan was originally to record a new song mm. here in America, uh, but uh, it's kind of too much. You know, everybody's a little bit ill, and you know, I, my voice is kind of fucked up as well. So we decided to just forget about that and uh, save it to film. Any other projects in the mix in the future? You, you already said there would be a possible mm. meeting for for him, and then also an album for Lion Eye. Is any mm -hmm. of the other guys in the bands doing any other 
side projects. I know Miguel said he had a solo album. Oh yeah, yeah. I haven't actually heard it because it only came out as a vinyl, and I don't oh. have a vinyl player, so. But the uh, cover is really cool. Cool. <laughs> and, cool. Uh, Manny has his other band under Black and Skies. Seppo has a few other bands he's playing with. <coughs> uh, Survivor Zero is one of them, and uh, I don't know. There's always something going on, but yeah. uh, nothing major. The album, the Miguel solo album. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you because I know he's not going to be here. Mm -hmm. But the solo album is it going to be for sale, like people to? To buy, um, I don't think it's gonna be put out through a label or anything like that. Okay. He might be selling it somewhere in the internet or something. I don't know. Okay. But I just thought I'd ask it straight from mm. you guys. <laughs> um, Me channels better. Um, <laughs> one last mm. question: How do you feel about people that will follow your entire tour? Like, how does that like kind of impact or? that are willing to go to every show. Are oh, there people like that? <laughs> yes. Yes, oh, actually okay. there are. <clears throat> um, well, what do you think of that? No, no, no. That's dedication. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I mean, cool. it's, you know, it's been amazing. Uh, the amount of uh, fans coming to the shows and, and to the meet and greets and, you know, it's mm -hmm. always not nice to meet them and hear what they thought of the show and so on. I really appreciate that. You know, we wouldn't be here without them, so. Cool. And we're we're gonna be at the meet and greet um, mm. this afternoon. Well, just tonight. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just been so cool finally getting to talk to you. And Thanks so, so guys, this is signing off now. Joel's at WZMB with Linde of Daniel Lion Eye. This is a dream come true. I hope you guys will enjoy watching this on the live. Well, listening to it on the live stream and viewing it at our website www.acu.edu/wzmb.